All right, so kind of got cut off in the last video. I tried to get it into the 15 minute limit I have. It didn't work. This is going to be quick, short one, but I didn't want to rush it in um, 14 seconds. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes to explain the dependent event. So we left off. I was kind of rushing through this, but um, the reason it depends on what the second marble happens to be um, is because if the uh, first marble I took out, so there's uh, eight marbles in here. If the first marble I took out was red, then this guy's gone, right? And so now there's only seven marbles left. Two of them are red. So that's uh, if the first one was red. Now, I'm going to erase that situation because the reason it depends is if the first one wasn't red, that means it was one of these other colors. So one of these other marbles, I don't know which one, is gone. So there's still only seven marbles in there. But because I didn't pick a red one the first time, there's now three or still three red marbles left um, to pick. So it depends on what the first uh, marble was selected. And therefore, that is called a dependent event. So we're going to go back to the same situation. Um, and this is the formula that uh, and I'm going to rewrite it for you in a minute, but I'm going to draw my picture again in my bin because I had two green marbles and I had two blue marbles and I had three red marbles and I had one white marble. So I'm just going to do that for that one. All right. So if events are dependent, the probability that um, they happen, uh, this the word then is still is in there. It still means probability of A and then B happening. So it's really there's still a word and in here. So we're still allowed to multiply, but the of the probability of B happening is conditional. And we're going to get into conditional later. So the probability of B happening is um, the probability that B happened given that A has already occurred. So again, we're going to look at this notation a little bit later. But that's probably a B given that A has already occurred. So this notation is shorthand of this wording down here, given that A has occurred. So the only difference between our independent formula and our dependent is that this, this probability depends on what already happened. So it's not just going to be the probability of B in general, because I have to take into account that A already happened. So if you're making a tree diagram, your branches along your tree will be taking this into account because your second branch happened after uh, or depended on what happened in your first branch. So if that's the case and you've done a tree diagram, then you can just multiply along your branches because this uh, has already been taken into consideration. But now uh, we're going to go back and actually uh, this little marble situation isn't even what I have for my example eight. So I'm going to erase it so I can talk about this next situation, which is um, a box contains four red and two yellow tickets. So um, I guess I'll just draw like one, two, three, four, and two yellow tickets. Can you even see that? Oh, there you go. So we've got uh, a, a box again four red and two yellow tickets. So notice to begin with, I have a total of six tickets um, and I'm going to randomly select from the box. I'm going to get two tickets from the box and I'm going to do it without replacement. So this, this word is important to look for in probability. Without replacement means whenever I, whatever I take out the first one, I don't put it back. So now the number of tickets I have is fewer than I had to begin with. And if this word says with replacement, then whatever I took out, I put back in so my sample space would stay the exact same each time. So with replacement is more of an independent type of situation because as I put it back, it, I don't remember when I shuffle them up, I can't remember which one I took. Uh, the, the box or the bin doesn't know. But without replacement, I'm putting that one in my pocket. And so now it depends because there's not as many as there were to begin with. And the red one's already gone, so now there's fewer red, et cetera. So if I want the probability that both are red, um, I want the probability of red um, and then red. So I can figure this out, probability of red times uh, the probability of red given that I already chose a red one. And again, this notation is going to come in later. 
uh, I kind of like to think about these just in terms of uh, we'll do the first event, which is the probability that it's red. So there's one, two, three, four out of six that are red. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna simplify this yet. Uh, and I'm allowed to multiply, but I've taken a red one out. So this guy is now gone. Because that already happened. So now notice that my sample space is five. So the probability that the second one is red, now I only have five tickets left. And of those five, that's how many red ones are left. And so I now can multiply those together and get 12 out of 30, which reduces, uh, both those reduced by six, so two fifths. So there's a two and five shot that I would pick a red one out, put it in my pocket, and take another red one out. Now you're gonna give this thing a go. Um, you're gonna do the same thing, same scenario, but you're gonna find the probability that the first one is red and the second one is yellow. So red, keep it, you're not putting it back, put it in your pocket, and the next one's yellow. So pause this thing, give it a look. All right, so here is your answer. Again, the probability that the first one's red is the same because there were four red tickets out of the six. Um, but remember, once I took that red ticket out, there were then uh, only five left. Uh, three were red and two were yellow. And so if that's all that's left after I put the one red ticket left, that's why there's a five in the bottom. And notice that I'm now interested in a yellow ticket. And so there are two yellow tickets uh, left in there. So red drawn first, two yellows still in there out of five. I can multiply those together and I would get um, eight out of 30. And that reduces to four fifteenths. And I told you it was going to be a short video and it's done. There you go. Probability. Here we go. Have a good one.